Hi guys, welcome to my coffee show. My name is Jack and today we are playing with hand grinders. We are going to compare not two, not three, but four different hand grinders. And the question that I want to answer by the end of this video is which of those four is the best for AeroPress? We're going to compare Timor C3 Nomco V2 K Ultra and Commandante C60 Barracuda. Wow! I will quickly talk about each of those grinders, then we're going to do the blind tasting test. The way I want to do it today, I divided them into two pairs. I will choose the winner of each pair and then those winners I will put against each other. So should be very interesting. Exciting video. If you're as excited as myself, definitely click like, sit tight and enjoy. Timor C3 with the spike to cut uh, burrs. 38 millimeter steel burrs is the smallest of those grinders here. It weights only 475 grams. Capacity is only 20 25 grams. It's also the cheapest made in China. Comes in a very nice box. Inside the box you will find a brush and a carrying pouch. Made from mostly aluminium, some plastic bits. I like the texture of the grinder. It helps to hold the grip. That knob, the plastic knob, looks a little bit cheap. To change the settings you have that knob uh, underneath here. Not that many settings to be honest. I'm not exactly sure what is the difference between each click, but my calculations here are it's about 38 microns so even though it can grind for anything it might be tricky to dial into the perfection Nomco V2 grinder with 38 millimeters titanium coated burrs you also have a version with the steel burrs also made in China it weights 510 grams made mostly of aluminium uh, some rubber bits to help with the grip you also get a wooden knob the capacity of this grinder also on a small side 20 25 grams what I don't like here is that those thin threads in the catching cup, so sometimes it's kind of tricky to uh, screw it back in. It can grind for anything. You get 24 clicks per revolution here. You would have to do multiple revolutions for a uh, coarser brew methods. I'm not sure exactly what's the difference between each click in terms of microns. I would say about 25, 27. Comes in a nice box. Inside the box you will find a carrying case as well and the brush. K Ultra made in Taiwan. That's a flagship of the Wanzi Easy Presser. Looks extremely extremely professional, very nice in hand, made mostly of aluminium, slightly heavier than the previous two, almost 700 grams, magnetically attached cup here, nice wooden knob here, collapsible handle, the settings are outside, so you see exactly where you are, very easy to change grind settings, it can grind for anything from espresso, even Turkish, all the way to the pour over, all within one revolution, you have plenty of settings, the difference between each click is about 20 microns so you can dial into the perfection. The burrs like with all of those grinders are conical but here they are conical heptagonal burrs, special geometry. Capacity of K Ultra is about 40 grams. In the box you will find a carrying case, you will find a brush, you will find a rubber ring that helps to maintain the grip. If you are looking for one and only grinder for all the brew methods this is worth your consideration. And the last one, something that I recently got, that's the Commandante C60 Barracuda. We all know Commandante grinders, Commandante C40, but this one heavier, 1 kg, capacity about 40-45 grams, and the burst huge for the hand grinder, 60 millimeters. It is made in Germany, made mostly out of steel. There is a plastic catching cup, plastic lid on top, wooden knob. To change the settings, you would be using that brass knob that the Commandante call gold clicks. There are 12 clicks per revolution. You would have to do multiple revolutions for the coarser brew methods. The size difference in between each click is about 21 microns, so it's very easy to dial in for pretty much anything. And the price of this grinder, it's so ridiculous that I won't even mention. Let's just say it's expensive. The grinder comes in the huge box, but inside that box you only find another catching cup, rubber band to help with the grip and some paperwork. So not much in terms of extras, not even a brush. I think let's start with actually grinding, because that's what those grinders are for, grinding and the experience here, the workflow and so on, it is important when you are choosing which grinder to buy. For AeroPress I'm going to use 12 grams of coffee. The settings coarser than an espresso but finer than a pour over. Very smooth uh, process but there is a kind of a strange noise. Very quiet. Also very smooth. 
The wooden knob feels much nicer in the hand. This one sometimes it's tricky to clean. That narrow spacing between the knob and the rest of the grinder, sometimes the coffee gets in there. This one immediately, look, because it's profiled here, it's slightly narrower here, it's nice to maintain the grip, although you have to keep an eye on that magnetically attached cup. Also quiet, also extremely smooth. That knob holds really well. 1 kg, you have to remember that. The knob feels nicely in the hand, long handle. The first few movements, you have to put some effort. After that, relatively easy, but not as easy as the rest of those lines. What I've noticed here, not sure if you will be able to see this lid here it wobbles you may expect some coffee jumping off the grind now the most difficult part of this test is to choose corresponding grind settings myself what i've noticed if i go for those lower settings the coffee resembles more americano and if i go for the coarser settings it's more towards the pour over first i just want to show you how i prepare my aeropress and then we're going to go for the proper test i wetted the filter here not for the taste but it helps to stick to that plastic bit 12 grams of coffee. Now I'm going to pour some water. So water temperature 98 degrees. I will pour 50 mils first and then we will bloom for 30 seconds. After that 30 seconds I put the remaining water, so 150 mils. Now I will use that plastic spoon to mix it a little bit. Put the top on and wait for two minutes. After that two minutes of brewing I just swirl it, reverse, and then just slowly, don't force it. I like to push it till I hear the hiss. And it's done. I will be tasting coffee from those glasses here. We will start with the cheaper pair. Underneath each cup there is a number. I will prepare two cups, one after another. I will lower the temperature of the second cup so it's not immediately obvious which is which. For today, once more, we're going to use Kaffa coffee roasters from Poland. Well, let's do it. Two cups are ready. Let's check which one will be the winner of this duel. Both cups I can detect black tea. Both cups I can detect some sourness. This one slightly higher on the sourness. That's why it was interesting to me but uh, it's flatter on the other flavors while this one got teeny tiny bit less sourness but overall there's more richness more sweetness more depth of the flavors so I'm choosing this one so the cup that won the first challenge is what is it that's a Nomco. Now is the time for the second pair, the expensive grinders. Whichever wins this duel, I will put it against Nomco and then we will crown the overall champion. This time number one, it's a K-Ultra and number two is a Commandante. Okay, so two cups are ready. First pair that I tested, decent cups, but it was kind of immediately obvious which one I prefer. Here, not so obvious. The biggest difference here, this cup, slightly less sour and the notes are more in balance. Here, I'm getting more of the sour. So the sourness is the dominant flavor here. Both tasty, both rich, both uh, having deeper flavors. As you know, I like sourness in my coffee. But here I'm getting also, I'm getting the nice sourness, but I'm also getting sweetness, maybe some honey. Nice balance here. Although in terms of pure vibrancy, uh, the first cup was better. So the winner of expensive grinders test for today is... What is it? It's number two. So it is Commandante. But now to get me completely over caffeinated, let's do one more test. Let's put this awfully expensive grinder against this cheap one and see if I can spot which is which. That should be interesting. Here number one will be Nomco and number two will be Commandante. Okay, the last two cups are ready. You know what? They are very similar in taste. There is a richness in both. There is a depth in both. There is a sourness slightly more in this one in terms of the sourness and juiciness. The only difference here and that's why I'm going for this cup here after that initial pleasantness there is a bitter aftertaste while I'm not getting it in the other one so the cup that won today don't tell me it's Nomco what is it it's number two is it, okay it's a commandante it cleaned up the flavor a little bit more okay I have to collect my thoughts and then I will give you my final conclusion Whew. okay guys if you are still here definitely click like subscribe to the channel plenty more things coming the results today four grinders in a different price ranges from relatively cheap to 
extremely expensive. You would expect huge difference in terms of the flavors between all four of them. And yes, there is a difference, but not as huge as the price would suggest. The worst grinder today was this one, so that's the C3. Now, I'm not saying it's a bad grinder. In isolation, you won't really notice that you are missing too much. But the notes are flatter, it does not develop the flavor that much. I don't like the noise when it grinds. If you are looking for the grinder with the best possible workflow, I would recommend K Ultra. If you like the fruity notes, if you like lots of sourness, K Ultra will be your grinder. Today with this coffee it lost with Commandante, but on another day with different coffee it could win. So K Ultra is still one of my favorite grinders. Now in terms of the best taste for today, narrowly, Commandante C60 is the winner. If you like the coffee that is nicely balanced, but still with that sourness and juiciness, you would go for for this one. I love it in terms of the look. In terms of performance you need some muscle to push it through. Maybe, I don't know, maybe because it's so expensive I would expect this to be a clear winner here and it wasn't. So even though this one won, this for today is my recommendation. The coffee tastes almost as good as from the grinder that costs, what, five times the price. The only complaint here, and I've noticed that before, it can leave that bitter aftertaste. Now guys it's time for you to share what is your favorite hand grinder for Aeropress. What is your favorite recipe for Aeropress? Share it with us. But for today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jack, this is my coffee show and hopefully I will see you soon. Thank you, bye!